start chapter number 8 that is winds storms and cyclones so today we will start our new chapter in this chapter as we all know that rain thunder lightning winds and storms are the natural phenomena which occurs in nature in this chapter we will see how this phenomena occurs in nature so these natural phenomena we should know the properties of air so we will first understand the properties of air so let's watch a video to under to understand the properties of air air is around us we live on earth and there is a lot of air around us air is a mixture of colorless odorless and tasteless gases the layer of air surrounding the earth is called atmosphere Air exerts force on the earth due to its weight. The pressure exerted by the air present in the atmosphere is called atmospheric pressure. In this chapter we will study two important properties of air. Air exerts pressure. Air expands on heating and becomes lighter. Before we begin, we remember that the moving air is called the wind. Air exerts pressure. It is easier to ride a bicycle in the direction of blowing wind because the blowing wind exerts a pressure on us in the same direction in which our bicycle is moving and makes our bicycle move faster. On the other hand, we find it difficult to ride a bicycle against the direction of wind because in this case the blowing wind exerts a pressure on us in the opposite direction in which our bicycle is moving. it makes difficult for us to drive while moving against the wind similarly while rowing a sailing boat we find that it is easier to row the sailboat in the direction of wind it is very difficult to row a sailboat against the direction of wind when we are flying a kite then the wind coming from our backside helps the kite to fly higher and higher It is the blowing wind which exerts the pressure on the kite to fly higher. When air is filled in a bicycle tube with the help of an air pump, it inflates. Here, it is the pressure exerted by air filled in a bicycle tube which keeps the tube tight and makes the bicycle tube feel hard. However, if we fill too much air, the bicycle tube bursts. because it cannot withstand huge pressure of air activity 1 to prove that air exerts pressure things needed a tin can with cap tripod stand burner cold water wire gauge method we pour a mug full of water in a tin can heat the water in the can by using a burner boil the water when the steam comes out freely stop heating and immediately screw the cap on it remove the can from the tripod stand and place it in the sink with the help of a thick towel we pour cold water from a tap on the hot tin can what do we observe the tin can gets crushed as if a large force acting on it from outside has crushed it when the water is boiling steam is formed in the tin can this steam expels all the air from inside the can when the can is capped and cold water is poured over it the steam inside it condenses and forms water since there is no air inside vacuum inside there is no air pressure the large air pressure or atmospheric pressure outside the tin can crushes the tin can inside activity 2 to show air expands on heating and contracts on cooling things needed a boiling tube an uninflated balloon 
two beakers, hot water, sticking tape, ice cold water. Method We take an empty boiling tube. It contains air, though we cannot see this air. Stretch the mouth of an uninflated balloon and fit it tightly over the neck of the boiling tube. With the help of a sticking tape. We take some hot water in a beaker. Place the boiling tube having a rubber balloon fixed to its neck in the hot water for some time. We will see that the balloon gets inflated. Reason When the boiling tube is placed in hot water, the air present in boiling tube gets heated, expands and its volume increases. When the boiling tube is placed in ice cold water, the air present in the boiling tube gets cooled, contracts and its volume decreases. Conclusion Air expands on heating and contracts on cooling. Activity 3 To show hot air is lighter than cold air. Things needed Two empty paper bags of same size Wooden stick Thread Method We take two empty paper bags or empty paper cups of exactly same size. Hang the two paper bags in the inverted position with their faces pointing downwards on the two ends of a light wooden stick with the help of short threads. Tie a piece of thread in the middle of the stick. The other end of this thread is tied to a hook fixed in a rigid surface. Initially, the wooden stick is perfectly horizontal, showing that the two paper bags contain an equal mass of the same air, cold air. We put a burning candle below the open mouth of the left side paper bag. We see that after some time, the left side of the wooden stick goes up, showing that it has become lighter than the right side. Reason When a burning candle is placed below the left side paper bag, the air above the candle flame gets heated. The hot air, being lighter, rises up and fills the left side paper bag after displacing the heavier cold air from it. Therefore, the left end of wooden stick becomes lighter and moves up. Conclusion Warm air is lighter than cold air. I hope that you have understand the properties of air by watching video carefully. Now let's move to our next topic that is high speed winds are accompanied by reduced air pressure. Let's see a video to understand this topic more clearly. By reduced air pressure, moving air is called wind. It has been found that fast blowing wind creates a region of low pressure. When the wind speed is very high, the roofs of huts or the tin sheet roofs of the godown are blown off. This is because when the high speed winds blow over the roofs, it reduces the air pressure above the roofs. Thus, the higher air pressure below the roof exerts large force to lift up the roof which can be blown away by the fast winds. The wings of an aeroplane are designed in such a way that air above them moves faster than the air below them. When the aeroplane runs on the runway, in order to take off, the air above the wings moves faster. The air pressure becomes very small as compared to the pressure below. The resultant upward push or lift makes the plane fly. Birds also fly in a similar way. Activity 4. High speed winds are accompanied by 
reduced air pressure. Things needed. Two balloons of equal size, stick, thread, water. Method. We take two balloons of equal size. Fill a little water into both the balloons to make them slightly heavier and more stable. Inflate both the balloons by filling air into them and tie their mouths properly with strong threads. Hang the two inflated balloons about 10 cm apart on a stick with the help of threads tied to their mouths. If we blow air or wind hard into the gap between the two balloons from our mouth, we see that the two balloons come closer. Reason When the high-speed air moves through the gap in between the balloons, the pressure of air falls in the gap. The air pressure on the outside of the balloons being higher pushes the two balloons towards each other and makes them come closer. Conclusion High-speed winds are accompanied by reduced air pressure. Activity 5 High-speed winds are accompanied by reduced air pressure. Things needed a piece of paper, an empty glass bottle. Method We take a piece of paper and crumple it to make a small paper ball. We hold an empty glass bottle on its side horizontally and place the small paper ball in the neck of the bottle just inside its mouth. We blow air into the bottle from our mouth to force the ball into the bottle. The paper ball does not go inside the bottle. Reason when we blow air into the mouth of the bottle, then the air in the neck of the bottle has high speed. This reduces the air pressure in the neck of the bottle. The air pressure inside the bottle being higher constantly pushes the paper ball out and does not allow it to go inside the bottle. Conclusion High speed winds are accompanied by reduced air pressure. Activity 6 High speed winds are accompanied by Reduced air pressure. Things needed. A strip of paper. Method. Hold a strip of paper 20 cm long and 3 cm inside between your thumb and forefinger as shown in. Blow air over the surface of the paper strip. We will find that the strip of paper lifts up. Reason. When we blow air over the surface of a paper strip, the fast-moving air creates a region of low air pressure above the paper strip. The air pressure below the paper strip being higher pushes the paper strip upward and lifts it up. Conclusion High-speed air or wind is accompanied by a reduced air pressure. I hope that you have understood about that how fast-blowing wind causes a reduced air pressure or region of low pressure let's move further so we will see our next topic that how wind currents are generated due to uneven heating of earth generated due to the uneven heating on the earth the air pressure at that place is lowered the cold air from the surrounding areas rushes in to fill its place Air moves from the regions of high air pressure to regions of low air pressure in the atmosphere. The greater the difference in air pressure, the faster the air moves. Thus, wind current are generated due to unequal heating on the earth. I hope that you have understood the topic that how uneven heating of earth causes or create a wind current. So let's move to our next topic in situation which are very disastrous, disastrous for both animals, human, humans as well as plants also. Let's see these kind of situation. Let's see a video to understand these natural phenomena, how it occurs in nature. Humid tropical areas like India very frequently. A violent storm with thunder and lightning is called thunderstorm. A thunderstorm is also known as an electrical storm. Generally, thunderstorms require three conditions to form. Moisture, 
an unstable air mass and a lifting force. The sun heats the surface of the earth. The hot surface of the earth warms the air in contact with it. The warm air, being lighter, rises up, creating a low pressure area. And cool air rushes in to take its place in the form of strong winds. If the air carries enough moisture, the moisture condenses when it comes in contact with colder air and forms clouds. We know that water vapor loses heat. when it condenses. Eventually, the raindrops become heavy enough to start falling. Then, the air at the top of the column cools and spreads out. The pressure above the column is high, so the cold air flows downwards. The upward movement of hot air and the downward movement of cold air lead to stormy winds accompanied by heavy rains lightning and thunder. Hazards of thunderstorm. Each year, many people are killed or seriously injured by severe thunderstorms despite advance warnings. Thunderstorms uproot trees and electric poles and blow away temporary and thatched roofs. Heavy rains which occur along with thunderstorms cause flash floods and water logging of low-lying areas. Precautions to be taken during a thunderstorm. A thunderstorm is always accompanied by lightning. Lightning is a giant electric spark. It causes maximum damage. We should not sit near a window. We should not take shelter under an umbrella with a metallic end. Cyclone. A cyclone is a huge revolving storm caused by very high speed winds blowing around a central area of low pressure zone over the ocean. Structure of a cyclone A cyclone is formed over warm sea water and is about 10 to 15 kilometers high. A cyclone revolves due to the force exerted by the rotation of earth. The center of a cyclone is a calm area having very low air pressure. The center of cyclone is called the eye of the cyclone. The diameter of the eye of the cyclone varies from 10 to 30 kilometers. It is a region free of clouds, no clouds and has light winds. Around this calm and clear eye of cyclone, there is a cloud region of about 150 kilometers in size. In this region, there are very high speed winds having speed of 150 kilometers per hour to 250 kilometers per hour, which are moving in circles around the eye. In this region, there are also thunder clouds which produce heavy rain. Away from this region of clouds, the wind speed gradually decreases. Formation of Cyclones The formation of a cyclone is a very complex process. Factors like wind speed, wind direction, temperature and humidity contribute 
to the development of cyclones. The sun heats the surface of ocean water. The warm water in turn heats the air above it. This causes a low pressure on a vast area of the ocean. Due to the low pressure, the moist air from the ocean surface begins to rise rapidly. This creates a strong upward wind that rotates spirally. As the warm and moist air containing a lot of water vapor rises high up in the atmosphere, it gets cooled and the water vapor present in it condenses to form clouds called thunder clouds. When water vapor condenses, it releases heat. The heat released by the condensation of water vapor in the atmosphere warms the air all around. This warm air rises higher into the atmosphere causing a low pressure. More air rushes to the center of the storm. This cycle is repeated. The chain of events ends with the formation of a very low pressure system with very high speed winds revolving around it. The weather condition consisting of a system of high speed winds revolving around a central area of very low pressure is called cyclone. The area of very low pressure at the center of the cyclone is called its eye. Once a cyclone is formed, it begins to move over the surface of ocean. The speed of wind in the cyclone is more than 120 km per hour. A cyclone needs a constant supply of warm and moist air. As the cyclone reaches the land, the supply of warm and moist air gradually stops and the cyclone dies down. In the southern hemisphere, these tropical storms are called cyclones and rotate in a clockwise direction. In the northern hemisphere, cyclones are called hurricanes or typhoons and rotate in an anti-clockwise direction. India has a large coastline which makes it vulnerable to cyclones both in terms of intensity and frequency of the cyclones. The east coast of India especially the coasts of Orissa, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu are more vulnerable to cyclones. Destruction caused by cyclones The violent stormy winds accompanying a cyclone result in the damage of houses, electric poles, industries, schools, hospitals, vehicles, crops, etc. causing a great loss of property. The fast-moving flood water of the sea, brought in by a cyclone, destroys roads, railway tracks and crops, uproot trees, reduce soil fertility, drowning human beings and animals, causing a great loss of life and property. Effective Safety Measures Against Cyclones The following safety measures should be taken by the government for the people living in cyclone-prone coastal areas to prevent cyclone-related disasters. An efficient cyclone forecast and warning service must be established. Rapid communication of warnings to the concerned government agencies, the ports, fishermen, ships and to the general public living in the coastal areas through radio, television, newspaper and other means. Precautions to be taken after the cyclone hits an area. Do not drink water that could be contaminated by floods to avoid waterborne diseases. Drink only clean water which has been stored for emergencies. Do not touch wet electric switches and fallen electric power lines. Do not use electrical appliances if wet. Advanced Technology for Cyclone Forecasting and Warning The Indian Meteorological Center is now using advanced technology 
by making use of satellites and radars for cyclone forecasting and warning. Cyclone warnings are given through a variety of communication media such as radio, television, newspapers, police wireless network. hope that you have understood that what are the prevention uh, what are the preventions we, we should take while these situations and what are the causes behind these natural phenomena i hope that you are clear with all the topics in this chapter